selective imaging modalities. Absolutely no preparation, no need for fasting, no need for dehydration, and no need for your all cream, affin, charcoal, nothing is required. Patient can just walk in, get this investigation done, and then go out with a report in half in an hour or two hours time. And in children, maybe we might need uh, oral sedation because they need to lie down for 20 minutes without moving. Uh, so, and non cooperative children, maximum we might need sedation and it's very highly sensitive investigation. So, the radio pharmaceuticals which are used for renal scintigraphy are technetium DTPA, technetium EC, ethylene cysteine, technetium DMSA, and DHA. And of course, in mo major, most of the foreign textbooks, you will see technetium MAG3, which is equivalent to DTPA, used to evaluate the function of the kidney, excretory function of the kidney and GFR. Of course, MAG3 is not used in the country, in our country, because it is almost 100 times more expensive than DTPA. So this is a, like EKG, EMG, and all ECG. Uh, this is a renogram, which maps the. Uh, uh, this is a renogram is the curve which maps the tracer in the kidneys as it moves from the vascular phase to the uptake that is cortical phase and to the excretory phase. So this is a perfusion phase and this is the excretory phase. This is called peak and this is the peak which should fall anywhere between uh, 2 to 4 minutes and there is some other parameter called T half which should be anywhere between 10 to 12 minutes. So, the previous one is a DTPA renogram and this is a EC renogram. You can find the difference, you will find very clear background and uh, excellent delineation of the renal cortex, renal thalamus and pelvic cell system and the excretion into the platter. So, this is a dynamic study, you can see the uh, tracer going into the cortex and coming out. So, and uh, the advantage of EC is it can be used even in elevated serum creatinine up to 7. But DTPA it can be used only up to 3. So this is a patient with elevated renal creatinine that's around uh, 3. three. Uh, so you see a lot of background and kidneys are not very well delineated as much as delineation you could get with the EC renogram. Especially when it, GFR is not mandatory then we will use the easy especially in children less than 9 years old. The indications of renal scintigraphy are in the evaluation of congenital anomalies of kidney and urinary tract, evaluation of obstructive uropathy of medial causes, voluntary kidney donor evaluation and the transplant evaluation and renal artery stenosis. Uh, uh, CAGAT anomalies start from the womb that is antenatally detected hydronephrosis. So, you all know that uh, it's dilatation of fetal system, which is the most common uh, urinary tract. Uh, urinary tract abnormalities are the most common anomalies detected on antenatal ultrasound. And this urinary tract dilatation is identified in as much as in one percent of all the pregnancies. And this 50 more than 50 percent of this antenatally detected hydronephrosis is transient and then resolve spontaneously in more than 50% of cases. Uh, incidence of significant uropathy is associated in only 0.2%. So, antenatal hydronephrosis which persists uh, even after birth is labeled as neonatal hydronephrosis. So, this is an important, uh, though not a question, maybe you might get antenatally detected uh, hydronephrosis as a question. But most important thing is this, go, this you are going to see in your practice quite often. Transient hydronephrosis, uh, 70 to 80 percent of these antenatal hydronephrosis are uh, transient or physiological because of this embryology. And uh, the most important goal of imaging is uh, uh, to differentiate between physiological dilatation versus significant obstruction, obstructive disease or reflux. So, Indian Academy of uh, Pediatric Nephrology, uh, they have proposed this algorithm in investigation of antenatal detected hydronephrosis. In perinatal ultrasound uh, should be done within a week and if there is no, no hydronephrosis one week after the birth, that's it, there is no need for further uh, imaging and if hydronephrosis is present, 
then uh, then uh, we, uh, patients need to be put on antibiotic prophylaxis and uh, there comes the diuretic renogram and MCOG and if there is a VUR then subject the child for DMS scan. If there is PUJ obstruction then uh, depending upon the differential renal function they may advise surgery and if post urethral valves and uh, urethroses all these things also to be addressed and managed accordingly. So this is the algorithm proposed by Indian Academy of Pediatric Nephrologists. So this is a case where uh, bilateral antenatally detected hydronephrosis and then even at uh, postnatal ultrasound also there was hydronephrosis in the right kidney. Always when you are interpreting renograms, this is left and this is right because we are visualizing kidneys from the from posteriorly, the camera will be placed posteriorly. See here you see normal extraction and then complete drainage. Of course, this is there is no obstruction to the drainage. So this is a classical case of obstruction. You see the thinned out cortex. You see the tracer appearing in the pelvic skeletal system only here, but you see it's little slightly delayed, and over time it's getting collected. And then in the delay, there is further accumulation of tracer in the pelvic calcium system. This is classical of pelvic PUJ obstruction. So you can see the renogram curve going up instead of coming down. So antenatal hydronephrosis, again, the uh, management is based on the differential renal function. There are so many authors and groups. These are very large groups uh, which follow if the differential renal function is less than 40, less than 35 or less than 30, 25, then only they will intervene and go ahead with surgery. So, and the frequency of renograms for uh, aggressive observation is uh, if the relative function is uh, more than 40 with obstruction, then once in 3 months, if it is 30 to 40, once in 2 months and if it is around 20, it is every month the child has to be followed up. And if the uh, function preserves till the child attains uh, uh, considerable age for uh, withstanding the surgery, they can go ahead and do surgery. If it is less than 20 percent, they will go ahead with PCM trial. And it is very useful investigation in evaluating post-op pyeloplasty because uh, quite often even after uh, Anderson pyeloplasty on ultrasound, you will see the residual hydronephrosis. Here this is a pre-op scan on the right side, significant PUJ obstruction and this is a post-op, you see nicely drained, very minimal tracer in the pelvis. But uh, you can see the size of the kidney and the transit, uh, transit of the tracer, everything is absolutely normal. This is a very good surgery. So this is an adult uh, PUJ obstruction, you can see thinned out cortex and slowly tracer is getting filled in the early phase and in the delayed images significant tracer retention and you can see the curve going up and the function is also relatively less and uh, so in the evaluation of obstruct obstructive uropathy that is we are evaluating dilated system could be of any cause any of these causes and of course it's more important you should rem remember is dilatation is not synonymous with obstruction. That's where radionuclear renogram will help. And even in the morning, uh, Dr. Baru sir was telling it's diuretic renogram. Along with technetium DTPA, we inject uh, injection LASIKs that is uh, diuretic and take the serial sequential images where this problem of obstruction versus non-obstruction would be resolved. So, this is a case of bilateral hydrourethronephrosis. You see in the initial phases you are not seeing the left kidney. Right kidney is yes, dilated pelvic skeletal system, dilated ureter and which is draining into the bladder. Of course there is a catheter in the bladder also. But even then you can see the drainage here. That means this is non-obstructive hydroureter on the right. But you see this kidney is hardly functioning in the dynamic phase but in the delayed images you are seeing the kidney. What is the? Yes. So it is refluxing mega ureter on left and then non-obstructive mega ureter on the right. And this is another case. This is an IVU. This is the right. 
what is this obstruction poj how many would say obstruction no obstruction yes there is no obstruction you see that it's nicely drained so this is mega calicosis okay so dilatation is not synonymous with obstruction so coming to ectop location that is uh, pelvic kidneys the unilateral pelvic kidney excellent delineation of the function and then the excretory function it could be unilateral it could be bilateral it could and it, it could be lumbar bilateral pelvic kidneys it could be lumbar kidney uh, or lumbar ectopia or thoracic kidneys or crossed fused ectopic kidney this is unilateral enlarged kidney the differential diagnosis would be duplex ureter or you can see two moieties here separately so there is a slight doubt that it could be cross fused ectopia so in the dynamic sequence if you can catch this ureter draining onto the other side it is cross fused ectopia so and this is another case bilateral pelvic kidneys with cross fused ectopia so excellent delineation and you get all the information uh, regarding the anatomy also so in case of post pyeloplasty this is a case of uh, obstruction on the right side and this is a post pyeloplasty images these are the post pyeloplasty images you can see there is improved function on the right side definitely but this is a renogram curve this is a pre pyeloplasty and this is a post pyeloplasty all the times the curves are going up and in the pre pyeloplasty the relative function is 56% and the post pyeloplasty 45% the patient will not keep quiet he will go and fight with the or sue the urologist so this is the main pitfall of uh, radionuclides and telepathy so you need to uh, do it with report with caution so this is a limitation there will be persistence of uh, persistence of obstructive patterns pattern of the curves so this lacks the specificity this is due to residual hydronephrosis and prior cortical impairment and uh, split renal function overestimation of function is a common technical problem because there are large hydronephrotic kidneys the area under the curve the um, region of interest would be more so naturally it will give more function so that is the overestimation which is a flaw again so the image comparison is more reliable to appreciate improved cortical transit and the improved uptake function don't go by numbers and curves so this is a patient uh, complains of uh, pain in the left loin and ultrasound showed bilateral hydronephrosis here you are not seeing the right kidney the left kidney at all and here you are seeing ballooned out but on the this is almost non functioning kidney in ivu but here you can see significant function there so if or if you stop there and go ahead with surgery or whatever it is then you are going to lose this kidney so this is the most more sensitive investigation so no surgeon will operate without the functional information so this plays a very important role radionuclide scintigraphy in a young hypertensive so we can evaluate renal parenchymal disease with a dtps scan because you will get renal and gfr and pyelonephritis can be evaluated on a dmsa scan renal artery stenosis can be evaluated with captopulinogram of course we have mibg scan and gallium pet where you can evaluate pheochromocytomas a paragon neuroendocrine tumors this is a gallium scintigraphy you see the pheochromocytoma on the right so normal size kidneys on an ultrasound and uh, if you are not able to do a uh, renal doppler because of the obesity or gas intervening and all and if you want to rule out a renal artery stenosis this is a very uh, impressive investigation that is a, a renogram with tablet captopril given one hour prior to the renogram if they are normal size kidneys and you get the curves normal curves and a normal gfr then 100% you can rule out hemodynamically significant renal artery stenosis this is being very well evaluated with various indian and western studies but still this is not the screening modality because of the 
radiation involved. So, Doppler is a screening modality, but wherever there is difficulty, wherever you want confirmation, you can ask for or suggest your colleague to go ahead with a cap Doppler renogram. So, what does cap Doppler do? So, in a normal uh, renal artery stenosis, there will be uh, afferent arterial stenosis and then with the renin because there will be a lot of renin angiotensin mechanism acting on the different arterial, you will have physiological constriction. When you are giving ACE inhibitor that is captopril, this effect is removed. So here whatever little is coming down, you have enough time because there is constriction here also to maintain the GFR and the plasma fractions. So you are having normal function. But here this effect is removed, so whatever little is going is going off. So the GFR is reduced. So this you are going to de demonstrate on the images. This is a baseline scan, almost uh, normal function kidneys, but with the captopril, you see the function of the right kidney is very almost this, this is almost non-functioning right kidney. This is the effect of captopril. If you can demonstrate this effect in it patient with uh, suspected renal artery stenosis or a diagnosed case of renal artery stenosis that then the intervention is going to help this patient then whatever it is BTR here whatever vascular intervention definitely this patient is going to improve that's what is shown here you see the renal artery stenosis you see the curve of the affected kidney this is post BTRA for the kidneys almost normal function so this is uh, this has a very important role in the prognostication and then follow up of patients post PTI. What is this? Crossroads ectopia or ectopic kidney. But ectopic kidney, so where I am not including abdomen, I am just focusing on the pelvis. So little comments. Yes, it's a transplant kidney evaluation. So in the transplant kidney evaluation, this is a flow phase which shows the iota and the iliac arteries and you should see the transplant along with the iliac artery slowly picking up and then you will see in the cortical phase you see the excretion and completely coming out. This is a normal transplant renogram. Of course, Doppler is the investigation of choice for the evaluation of uh, transplant kidney complications and all but still to radionuclear scintigraphy has a significant role. So this is here, you, can, you could have seen the difference. There is significantly decreased vascularity, decreased uptake and hardly any function. This is characteristic of rejection. Whereas this, you see, of course, a little bit, uh, even the flow is affected, but the uptake is still there and you are seeing bladder very minimal. Hardly the tracer is coming out of the kidney. So, prolonged, persistent nephrogram. Diagnosis? ATN. ATN. So, that's how the curve will be flat like this. So, if you can see this difference, then you can differentiate between vascular rejection versus ATN. This is the investigation because the Doppler cannot even, Dr. Uh, Varaprasad, who has so much of experience, he will not be able to tell you whether it's ATN or rejection. But if you can show this on a nuclear uh, scintigraphy, it is very specific that it is ATM. <coughs> Coming to collections around, so you have seen on his uh, uh, images too, some radionuclear images. So around the transplanted kidney, you see a photon void which is slowly getting connected. It is urinoma. If it is not, it could be either hematocele if there are internal septations or a lymphocele if it is an immediate post-operative period. So uh, unlike any other place where you see collection, you will put a needle and find out what it is. But here your surgeon will not allow you to do this. This is the investigation which you have to advise or order your colleague to get it done. Okay? This is another patient, uh, a transplant patient with perigraft collection. So, this is a delayed image which shows the leak which is getting collected in the pelvis. So urinary leak. So very simple intravenous injection, that's all, which doesn't have any contrast induced effects and all those on the kidney. There won't be any CIN, NFS, NSF or NFD, all those things. It is very safe. Okay. 
Photogametry and Cortical Centigraphy.